So I've had a lot of questions lately about how to do string walking or the basics of how to string walk. So in this video, I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of how I string walk and a couple of tips and tricks in case you're very new at this and you've never done this before. Uh, we will be sticking to World Archery Baribo rules as far as uh, string walking is concerned. So I'm gonna do my best to use that type of terminology as much as I can. So yeah, like I said, uh, I've had a lot of requests on how to do string walking, how to do the basics, and I'm gonna show you in this video. So basically, I'm gonna stick to world archery barebow rules. So barebow being, it is a, any sort of a rise or limb combination, you can have weights on it, as long as the bow fits through the barebow ring. Uh, so that's what we're going to stick to in this. I'm using a Yoast tab here. Uh, it's basically just a basic aluminum plate with some graduations right there on it for you to reference uh, on where you're string walking to. So string walking, what is it and how do you use it? String walking is essentially the act of crawling down the string or walking down the string in order to use your arrow point as the actual aiming reference in the center of the target. So this would be what is called point on. So that means all three fingers are underneath the arrow and you are up against the knock as you pull back. This would represent the furthest distance you could possibly shoot aiming on because this is called point on meaning when your point is in the center and you're as far back as you could possibly go that's where you will end up shooting now walking down the string is for shorter distances so if i were to pick a spot say midway down the tab right about here mark it with my thumbnail on the string set my tab in my finger right at that height now i am set up for what I would approximately say is probably in the neighborhood of 35 yards, maybe 35 meters, somewhere in there. So what you need to know as far as what is legal for World Archery Barabo is this. You can have factory markings like this. I believe I've read in the rule book that you're allowed a maximum of two different sized marks for your uh, tab that is factory based, just like this, because there are two different size hash marks here for reference. You can also use uh, your own personal marks, but they must all be identical in size and in length, and you cannot have any sort of indications on them. So you can't write 10 next to where your 10 yard mark is or your 10 meter mark. You cannot make any sort of indications there, and it is up to you to decide if you put them every 10, every five, or more than that. So an important thing to note about string walking, it is, especially if you are new to this and you're coming from compound or Olympic style recurve, is that it is the opposite of what our sites did in Olympic style recurve. So Olympic style recurve or compound, you would essentially follow the arrow. So if you were impacting high, you would move your sight up. You do not crawl up if you are hitting high. You crawl the direction you want the arrow to go. So it is the same as adjusting sights on a firearm because we are adjusting our rear sight and on recurve and compound, you're adjusting your front sight. So that's why it's opposite. So I am here at 10 meters. I'm gonna do everything in meters here because that's just what I have my range finder here set in. Uh, you know, you can do it in yards, you can do it in meters, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm just shooting the meter game lately, so I'm gonna use that. It is important to note that meters do not translate to yards. 10 meters is around 11 yards, 90 meters is around 99 yards. So you'll see as you go back and forth to the different distances, if you shoot it for 10 or whatever you're trying to shoot it for, make sure you're shooting it in the yards or the meters that your tab is set up for, or that you've memorized your crawl on these marks here. So I've got a camera downrange on the target face down there so you'll be able to see impact points and how I'm adjusting to make things work. And if you're brand new at this, you'd best off be starting with a 10 yard shot or less. Because as you're really close to this target, if I'm really far off on my crawl, the impact point won't be very far off on the target. Whereas if I was back at 30 meters or even further than that, if I was a little bit off on my crawl, the impact point would be quite vast on the target and you can easily miss. So it's always best to start close and then go further back. 
It is important to note that as you anchor, it must be in a consistent place in order for your crawls to be consistent. And just note that a higher anchor will generally limit the furthest distance you go, but it will also make your closer crawls more comfortable. So meaning if I anchor up higher, my 10 yard crawl will only be down here, as opposed to the way I anchor, which is much lower, my 10 yard crawl is almost at the bottom of the tab, or 10 meter, 10 yard, doesn't matter, 10. We'll just call it 10, okay? So here I'm at 10, and if you're gonna start at 10, I would suggest crawling down somewhere in the neighborhood of about an inch and a half to two inches down from the knocking point. So, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of six to seven centimeters, give or take. So if I just put my tab plate like this, bump it up against the knock, try not to knock my drop away rest down. And then I pick a spot and make note of it because I'm going to use these indications on the tab here to decide where I crawl consistently. So I'm gonna crawl to the center of this hole down here, this lower hole right down there on this lower portion, this lower hole down there. And I'm gonna use that big mark that's right in the middle of that and start with that. So that's right about, I'm gonna say about an inch and three quarter down the tab face, down the tab face. Again, I mark it with my thumb, set my tab right at the level of my thumbnail, use my fingers to set it exactly at the level of the thumbnail as well, and then shoot my shot as normal. And you'll see, I hit a little high. So, it's pretty simple. If you hit high, you crawl down further. So, I have no idea how much further to move down. So, I'm just gonna move down one big mark. So, I'm gonna go from here on my tab down to there. One full mark down and see how much closer that brings me. Now, as you see, as I crawl to different distances, the arrow will change its relative position to my eye but my anchor will always be the same. My anchor never changes up or down, front to back. That always stays the same, but the arrow will essentially move up and down relative to my eye, and that's how it impacts my impact point. So I'm gonna go down one full mark below that. and you'll see I'm closer, but I still need to come down a little bit here. I probably need to come down about a half of a mark now. Now, the way that I'm aiming at this target is I'm taking the crest of the top of my arrow and I am putting it in the very center of the target. You can do that, or you could also take the crest of your arrow and put it at the bottom of the gold. Um, basically, your, your point on low instead of point on in the center. I prefer it in the center because this giant target face its yellow spot is huge up close, but if I were to be shooting a much smaller target face, my point would be essentially higher in space, so I'd have a little bit of difficulty maintaining consistent impact points depending on my target changing. So I'm always going to be using the top of my crest and the exact center of the target as my holding reference for when I let go of the arrow. So I'm gonna come down from that very first mark, one and a half marks now. And there you go. So you can see that going from right about here to right about here made enough difference for me to say, okay, right now, if I count from the bottom, because it's so much closer to the bottom, I am one, two and a half marks up from the bottom. So what you, the hard part about using these type of tabs with this type of graduation is memorizing where all of your crawl marks are because you'd have, have to essentially count down from the top or count up from the bottom for where each yard or meter reference is. So it's a little tricky. And that's why uh, I like to basically make some indications on my tab myself. If this didn't have this type of marking here, I'd put a piece of tape, piece of paper, and use a water resistant marker to make marks on the tab as to where my crawls are. So now that I've got my 10 meter uh, setting here, I'm gonna go back to 20 
and figure out my 20 crawl and we'll continue further back and you'll see as I start going further and further back the arrow starts to lower or my tab starts to go up and that will maintain my impact point. All right, so now we're at 20. It's pretty simple. I still have the arrows down there from the uh, end before. But now that I am further back, my arrows would be hitting lower if I use the same crawl. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crawl up because I would want the arrow to go up on the target face. So I'm actually gonna go back to the same mark that I tried the very first shot. And I'm gonna crawl to that mark in the center of the lower hole. I'm pretty close, a little high. So I'm gonna come down a little bit. I think one half mark would be too much. So I'm gonna come down about a half of a half of a mark, so a quarter mark. Even though there is no quarter mark on the tab, I'm still gonna come down because I'm hitting a little high. So that little bit of a difference, you'll see, is enough to make an impact shift on the target. It didn't quite shift it enough, so now I'm going to go down that full half mark. And there you go. You'll see that my height is pretty good. I'll shoot it one more time at that level. And you can see the height's pretty good. Something to note for advanced type level stuff. As you change these distances, you'll, your impact point left and right can change slightly because we are essentially actually pulling the bow back different amounts for the different crawls. So your impact point can shift slightly left or right. So a quick tip in case you're new to this, um, the easiest way to shift your groups left or right without changing your string alignment or anything else is just to change the plunger tension that you've got. So you might want to add a click or two or remove a click or two in order to maintain your impact point in the center. Yes, this affects your tune ever so slightly, but so does string walking. And I'd rather keep my string alignment the same and be comfortable and just use my plunger to adjust the left or right. I would not like to aim off in different spots every distance. For those of you who are interested in string alignment and uh, would like to learn more about that, I'll put links in the description below to a video on string alignment plus a card at the top up there for you to check out. I talk about specifically how I set my string alignment in my bare bow and uh, I really like setting it up that way. So instead of boring you and taking you every 10 meters, we're going to go right back to 50 meters because I have a crawl set for that and I'll be shooting some arrows at 50 meters and I will show you the differences on how much a small amount of crawl can make at that long distance and that's why I suggest to start here at 10 uh, meters or yards and then walk back from there. So we're back here at 50 meters and I'm gonna do my best to find my 50 meter crawl or be really close to it. Really pay attention to how much lower the arrow is relative to my eye. But notice that my anchor has not changed. It's a little far for me to see, so I'm going to use my rangefinder as a binocular. Oh, height's pretty decent, just a little low. I'm going to shoot one more arrow and make sure it's pretty close. See a little low there again? If I'm low, I crawl up. So I'm going to crawl up a half of a mark, and you'll see how much of a difference it makes. It can make quite a lot. See how I hit much higher? So a half of a mark at far distances makes a whole lot more of a difference than a half of a mark up close. A half a mark up close made about this much of a difference at 10 yards, 10 meters. Here at 50, 
a half of a mark made six to eight inches of difference. So a huge change compared to before. So now I'm gonna split the difference and go up a quarter of a mark. And there you go, pretty close. So that is the basics of string walking. Now I could continue to crawl further back and find my point on and it'd probably be somewhere in the neighborhood of 65 to 70 meters, somewhere in that range. But because with barebow and world archery rules and world archery formats, the maximum distance is 50 meters. So I don't need to go back any further, at least at this point. I do plan on shooting other different disciplines like the NFA field courses, which go out to 80 yards, uh, but that won't be happening anytime in the near future. So I just wanted to show you the basics of string walking. Now, if you are a seasoned barebow shooter and you love string walking and have some interesting tips and tricks for people who are new, please comment below because there are a lot of people that read those comments. And in case I miss something or in case you have really good tricks, you might as well post it below if you really want to help out some people like I am uh, because, you know, a lot more people will get into this the more information there is out there. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, consider hitting the subscription button and the notification bell, as well as the like button. I would appreciate it. Also, please consider supporting my channel if you head to my website, jakekaminski.com. There'll be info and links on Patreon, apparel, books, and equipment sales, PayPal donate button, a PO box to send things to. And above all else, please share this video because there's no better advertising than word of mouth.